everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're joining for the first time. In this video, I am going to be doing some stamping and we're gonna make a really cute anniversary card. So I just recently acquired this really pretty stamp set and it's beautiful. I'll link all of the materials I'm using in the description box below. And I'm gonna make a really pretty anniversary card out of this, but one of the things I really like about this stamp set is I think it's pretty universal. You could do a lot of different things with it. So it's not just anniversary specific. You could do little birthday cards with it you could do a lot of fun things so I like kind of keeping that in mind when I'm shopping for stamps because I like things that can do a lot of different things it just kind of makes your money go a little bit further because they can be quite pricey I also did I put the dies in the back of these little pockets I got the coordinating dies for this stamp set because I just I think it's so worth it um, again it can be a little pricey but when you can I love getting the little coordinating die set so I have my little alcohol markers here. We're going to do a little bit of coloring. I think this is going to turn out really, really cute. I have a couple additional embellishments that I'm going to add on to this card, and I think it's going to be really sweet in the end. So give this a thumbs up if you're excited to watch this card come together, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's a closer look at this stamp set. I think it is so cute, and it has a lot of very different little sentiments with it. Uh, wishing you a lifetime of happiness is so pretty. I think we're going to be using that today. Day. but there's also a happy mother's day a welcome little one a congrats so that's why I really liked this and thought it was worth purchasing and having in my collection because it can be fairly universal so the first thing that I want to do is I am going to trim my panel down I believe yes let me do that first before I do some ink blending then I'm going to do some ink blending and we're going to create a really pretty little pond in this little background area of my panel I'm going to grab my little die set for A2 cards. I really like this because it helps trim down the panels really nicely. And I'm just going to lay this down on my panel. I'm going to do an 80 pound card stock for the front little panel. And then I'll do 110 pound for my actual card base once we get there. And again, I'll link all the things that you see on my craft desk down in the description box below. So if you want to take a closer look at anything or if you need one of these things to create this card yourself, then go ahead and check out that description box and I have everything ready for you. Okay, so really quickly, let's just trim down this panel first. That might be a little bit more helpful for me. And I'm just going to place this, whoops, wrong side switch that around send this through and we'll get to ink blending okay there that comes out and now it is nice and trimmed down with those buttery nice beveled edges which I just can't get enough of and I'll save this tape to the side so that I can use it once more in a little while okay so I have that done I can put those away and now let's go ahead and start ink blending. I'm gonna go ahead and just place, actually I'll use that tape, and place this on my mat just so it doesn't move while I am. I'm just doing a very simple blending here. Okay, so very simple blending. I'm gonna be using this tiny little cube from Lawn Fawn and the color is mermaid. It's really, really pretty. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my little teal brush here. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of the ink, tap it off on my mat. Yeah, just a little bit more. Tap off. And I'm going to be really light with this, but I'm going to go ahead and just come in and create, if you will, a little pond. Okay, so focusing more on the center, I like to start off really, really light because you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So I go really, really light and then just continue to add as needed. And I'm focusing on that middle area. This does have a little pond in it, and I kind of played around with it, but I didn't really love how it was coming out personally for the look I was going for. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do because I, I really like how soft and kind of glowy this little method ends up turning out. So I have my little pond there, just really nice and light. And I have kind of just like a little skinny oval going on, okay? So I'm gonna stop there. I think that is the look I'm going for. And then we can bring out our stamps and start stamping all of our 
little embellishments. They're gonna be super cute. So I'm gonna wipe off my mat and then let's bring out the Misty and start some stamping. Okay, so I have my stamps. I have my paper. I'm gonna do 80 pound card stock. I'll link the paper I like in the description box below. And I'm gonna go through my stamps here and see what I want to use. So I am definitely using the swans. So I'll grab my little swans, place them on my paper. Just like that. I also want this little crown. A heart. And the last thing I'm gonna grab is this little bit of foliage. Okay, and place that down as well. Okay, so setting the remaining stamps off to the side. I will be doing some more stamping in just a little bit, but I'm gonna wait until the end. And I am going to actually don't need those. Let's go ahead and shut the door, have the stamps cling on to the door there. Okay, reposition. There we go. And I am going to be using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. I will be coloring in my little stamps and these little images next, so I want to make sure that I use an ink that is going to be friendly with my markers next. So that's why I chose this one. Stamping really, really well. Getting them really good and inked up. Got a little bit of ink on my door, but I can just come in and just grab that off. I think I smudged my ink though in the meantime doing that. looks pretty good, at least for the first time. And bring it down and stamp. We'll see how the first layer turns out. Okay, open that up. That actually looks really, really nice. I don't think I'm gonna restamp that. If for some reason you missed any areas and you just didn't like the impression, the best thing is everything is still in the same spot. You may need to just realign your paper in case it, you know, clung up on the door when you're opening it, but you can just re-stamp your little stamps real quick and then add it again. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my stamps off really quickly. Squeak, 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 squeak. And take those off and we'll move on to the coloring. Okay, keeping my Misty handy because I will be coming back to it in a little while, but I'm going to bring out my little panel and I'm going to tape it down just because I don't want it to move while I'm coloring. I honestly thought the coloring was not going to be my favorite thing. I was a little bit stressed out when starting stamping that the coloring would be really hard because the only coloring experience that I personally have comes from my year in kindergarten and now as a mom, you know, using cute little Minnie Mouse coloring books and coloring with the kids. But honestly, the coloring has become my favorite part of the whole process. And when I'm shopping for stamps, I'm always looking at stamps that have the potential for being colored in because I find that it's really, really nice and relaxing. So I went ahead and I did the, I actually have a couple sets of markers. The ones today that I'll be using are in the pastel collection and I'll link them down below. And they came with this little color swatch. These were all blank, so I had to color them in. I highly recommend you do that because honestly, some of these colors, the caps, don't, I don't think they're very accurate on what the color truly looks like. So when looking through, I have mine in a really big pot here. When looking through my colors, I, it, I found it really hard to rely on the caps for accuracy of what the final color would be. So I went through and I colored in my little color chart. It also really helped me practice my blending and helped me kind of get my hand motion in with alcohol markers. So this was actually a really good way to dip my toes into the water with coloring. So I highly recommend that you color these in when you get your marker set and keep them handy because now when I go to look through what colors I wanna use, I don't use the caps, I use these because I feel like you can actually see exactly what's gonna look like on your paper. So I just wanted to share that. I did buy another collection too. Actually, I got it for my birthday and it's really, really awesome. So I'll share that in another video coming up and we'll do even more coloring. 
Okay, so grabbing the colors that I'm going to work with today, I have a lot of fun ones that I'm going to use. So I'm gonna do Buttercup and I'm gonna do Hollyhock for the pink, a lime green, which see, lime green, this is called lime green. That's not traditionally what I would think lime green, right? Um, and then we're gonna do a sand white, a neutral gray two, and tea rose. So let's go ahead and begin. I'm gonna start by, let's start with this one. So I'm gonna do a neutral gray. They are gonna be really, really basic in coloring. I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadowing to the side. So I'm gonna use, mine come with a brush tip and a fine tip. Now you do need to make sure you're getting what you want when shopping for these because they're are some that come with the brush tip and the chisel tip. So I wanted to have this really nice fine tip because look at how dainty and delicate some of these images are. And I really wanted to have a little bit more control with that. The other side is a nice brush, which is really amazing for blending. So anyway, shop how you want and how you envision using your markers, but I definitely wanted to have more of a pointier tip option on at least one end of mine. So I'm just gonna go through on the left side of this little swan, taking my time. I'm just gonna add a little bit of shadow to the side here. And then I'm gonna go down here, here, here. I love coloring. I love coloring with the kids. I love, I just love it. And I'm really glad that I'm enjoying it in my own creative space too now. Okay, going on to the second, I'm just adding some, a little bit of shading. And here as well, okay? Go ahead and approach this any way that you would like. This is how I wanted it to look that's kind of the final look I was going for really really basic but I wanted it to be a white swan but have a little bit of dimension to him and her okay so I'm going to put that color away you can always go in and add a little bit more if you need just to bump up the color a little bit so I might bump up him just a little bit And I actually like how she looks. Okay, so now I am going to do their little beaks. And Tea Rose is the color that I'm gonna do for their little beaks here. Because this is such a small space, I'm not gonna do much blending here. Not much blending or shading at all. I'm simply gonna color those in. You can add just a little bit more on one side but it's such a tiny little space that probably doesn't matter much anyway. For the crown, I'm gonna go in with this yellow buttercup. I'm going to be adding an embellishment on the top of this, so I'm not going to worry too much about the coloring in terms of shading here, because we're gonna be adding some glitter to the top of the crown a little bit later. Okay. For the heart, I am going to be using this really pretty color called Hollyhock. It's really pretty. It goes on a little bit, um, how do I wanna say, like like neon maybe? Like when I put it down, I'm like, ooh, that's highlighter. It reminds me of highlighting in college, but nope, it kind of dries a little bit more, just uh, softer, if you, if you will, not as bright. Okay, so there it goes going down. And then on this one, I am gonna add a little shading to the side. So I'm just gonna go back to that left side, add some additional ink. Okay, and I'm gonna flip my marker over to that brush side and just kind of brush that out into the lighter side. Simple, simple, we, all, uh, we will also be adding some embellishments to this as well. And finally, let's do our little foliage here. I have a sand white, and again, I'm gonna use that fine tip. I'll be doing some very basic, almost nondescript shading here. Again, we're working with a very tiny, narrow space for a lot of 
the coloring we're doing. So you can shade, but it's, we're not given a lot of space to work with, if you know what I mean. So I'm gonna let that kind of sink in for a second. I'm gonna go back in and just add additional ink to the left side. And it's very, very simple, but it adds a little bit of shading, just a little. And for our final color, I'm going in with the lime green. You guys will giggle, it's not lime green at all. It's very much a sage. Again, that's why I really like those little coloring charts. I feel like it makes marker selection quicker and easier. Okay. Basic, basic, basic. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go through now to my dies. I'm gonna find and select all the dies that I need. So I need this and her. And let me grab the rest of them and then we will cut these out. Okay, I'm gonna bring in my little skinnier pink tape. I'm gonna be very careful about lining up my dies and I'm gonna take them down so they don't shift when I run them through my spell binders. Okay, this is all ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and off camera, I will just run this through my die cutting machine, cut these all out, and then we will start constructing this card. It's gonna come together very beautifully. I'm excited for you to see what we're going to do. Okay, all done. And they are all cut out really nicely. I really love the dies. Now, of course, they're not mandatory. The reason they do sell them separately is to give you the choice because you always could just fussy cut them out yourself, but this just does such a beautiful job. Look how nice. And I love the simple coloring on that. Just gives just that hint of dimension, but it allows that nice white swan to really just shine. I really like that. Ooh, the cuts just look so nice. Thank goodness I so far have lined them up just right, but we don't want to speak too soon, right? Get our little crown out. Aw, that one's really sweet. Tiny little crown. Okay, heart, and then we should just be all done. Oh, very cute. Okay, there we are like the little shading on that too. That's really fun. Okay, let's go ahead and bring our panel back in and let's start kind of getting everything added and placed and see how we can bring this all together. So bringing my Misty back in because I do want to add a greeting and I thought that the greeting would be nice right on the card panel. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna bring my card panel right back in. Don't need this tape any longer. And before I stamp, what I will do is I'll just start kind of building my card up to get an idea of where everything is going to go. So I'm gonna have her here. I'm gonna have him here. Look at the little glow of the, the pond. I really like that. Um, now I'm going to do this little guy here and just placing at this, at, at this moment, we're not doing anything. Whoop, my little plates are going crazy. Okay. So that looks good. Of course, I'm going to add the other embellishments, but they are not necessary for this part. So now what I would like to do, I think I'm going to bring, bring him up a little her over a little, that looks good actually. Okay, now what I would like to do is I'm going to stamp my sentiment onto the card base. So what I want to say is, because it's an anniversary card, I want to say life is beautiful. You can do anything you want. There's again, so many sentiments that come with this, but I thought it would be really nice to kind of have it tuck right in here. And then the little tiny life is will kind of nestle in here. Okay, I think that looks nice. Okay. So what I'll do is I will close the door. And then at this point, it does not matter 
that these are on there. I just needed them on there so I could kind of get an idea of where I wanted my sentiment. Reposition my card base, or I'm sorry, my little panel. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment here. That looks really nice. Okay, we did a good job. Close, press down. Ah, one and done. Looks great. Grab my little stamp chamois and clean this off. Squeak, 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 squeak. And I'm going to clean up my stamps. I like to do that right away because sometimes if you leave them on the door, you forget. And then <laughs> it's just a lot easier when your mind is on it just to stick them back in there. Just like that. Okay. So now we can put the Misty away and let's grab... I'm going to grab the card base and get that all ready to go. And we're going to start gluing and placing and finishing this up. Okay, I have a 110 pound card stock and I'm going to do an A2 size card. I finally found the score buddy in the inches. It took me forever. I kept finding it in is it millimeters. Anyway, I had to send one back because I thought I actually did order it in inches and then Amazon accidentally sent me the wrong one. So then I, on a oh, faith and prayer, reordered it again to see if they would actually send me the right one. And they did. Thank goodness. I've been looking for this forever and I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and score at the five and a half. Okay, and then I am going to fold, and then I have my nice card just like that. How pretty. And I like that it's top folding. I think that's, I think it's really kind of classy. Okay, so let's put a little bit of tape down here. Let's just get, I kind of like the base just to be kind of, I like everything to stay. Stay where I need you for just a minute. Okay, let's grab some tape, some foam tape, and we're going to pop this panel up in the middle. This is for a, I think it's a 50th wedding anniversary that they are celebrating. Isn't that amazingly beautiful? Okay, looks like my new roll, I did get a little bit thicker of a width, but I, I think my, my height is okay. So I should be okay. Okay, so now that I'm getting into card making, so when I actually, when I started crafting back in 2000, well, I was still in high school when I really started loving to craft, I did a lot of scrapbooking. And so this has kind of been fun to kind of get back into paper. I kind of took a a turn and did a lot of other things, but it's kind of been fun to get back to paper again. I'm going to go ahead and just center that and place that down. And that foam tape really just adds a really nice, subtle dimension there. Um, but I, I now I'm getting excited now that I'm back into paper crafts and starting to dabble with card making. I get excited when someone <laughs> has something that they need a card for, um, because it just allows me to have a little creativity time. Okay, that is really cute. I like the glow. So I'm gonna grab some foam adhesive dots and we are just going to get started on placing everybody. So I'm gonna put her down first and let me just pop them up on some dots so we can get some additional dimension. Okay, whoops, what are you doing? There we go, it was way too close, okay. And then same with him. It's a little raised look. It's one of those things that's so simple but so effective. And let's get you down one by one. Okay, I haven't taken his off yet so I can just move him around. And kind of see where I want. I think just like that. Yep. Okay. Let's 
let's do him and just start kind of building. So really simple. We did just did a tiny bit of ink blending, a tiny bit of coloring and simple, but really effective. I'm going to put him up just a hair, although I do want them to be within smooching distance, but I don't want them to be on evil, e equal. I just want a little bit of a tilt there. I don't want them to be um, even right there. I like the little off center or not off center, but off, off look there. Okay. That looks really nice. Okay. For this piece, I want it to be here, but I'm only going to pop up the bottom because I'm going to have the top just lay over him. So I just need to pop up, pop up that bottom part just enough. And then, ooh, I like this. Okay, and I'm being mindful of where it's going to be in correlation to the sentiment as well. Kind of want it to tuck nicely with that B for beautiful. Maybe bring it up a little bit. I like that the curve of this right leaf kind of is complementing the curve of that cursive B. It's the little things for me, I think. Okay, and then let's do the crown. Now the crown, I'm gonna need a really tiny piece. So I'm gonna cut this because I just wanna pop up the top of it. Actually, I can use the rest for that part. I just wanna pop up the top because I really do want that crown nestled on top of her head. I want the two pieces of paper to make connection. Oops. Sorry, you can't see this for a minute because I need to focus, but I'm just going to add it to the top. Okay, I added it to the top so that the bottom part can just, j much like this piece, just go snug over. Oh, I like that. I'm going to have it come out just a little bit. Again, overlapping to make connection with her, the swan piece. Yes. Okay. And finally, I'm going to use this remaining little piece because it really doesn't need much. Perfect. I'm going to do this little guy here. Oh, but we're not done. We are not done. Okay. Now... Okay, I love this. Let's clean up. This makes me a little bit antsy. Okay, now what I'm going to do is add, I'm going to add some glossy accents. And I want to add them to this here. And the reason being is because I want to have some of these really pretty shiny and they're dimensional hearts. And I'll link them down below. They're really pretty. They're made by Doodlebug Design. And they are so pretty. They're just little rainbow hearts. So I am going to add two of the bright pink ones. I wonder if I should use my tweezers here. Okay, I want two to come off from her. Just kind of bending to grab. Yes, I like that. So because those are kind of glossy and pretty, I wanted to add and create that same look with my paper one. So I'm gonna open up my little glossy accents here. And I am just going to add, I might need to get a little bit of a pin, get it unclogged here. should be good now. Okay, going slow. I'm just going to add, it's kind of like puff paint, if you will, really slowly that little accent there. And then it looks like I have a little bubble here. So I'm going to see if that little pin will, oh, sure did. We'll remedy that. And then you can just take the tip and just kind of actually 
I'm creating a bubble now. Just gonna take the pin and just kind of smooth it out. And pop a little bubble I have. Kinda drag it to the edges to take that shape on. And now for my crown, I am going to do a little, um, I think this is called Wink of Stella. It's a, yes, Wink of Stella brush. I need to get a new one because I didn't quite install mine correctly and I kind of made a mess of it. But what this is, is it adds a little bit of glitter. It's so pretty. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glitter to her crown. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Okay, less is more, Beth, less is more. Okay, I'll link this brush down to that. This is gonna be so fun to keep in mind for other card projects as well. Okay, removing my tape, we are all done. We did it. It is so cute. Simple, but really, really just elegant, I think. And then you can kind of get an idea for, this is gonna take a while to dry. I'm not sure how long, because I always just set them to the side and come back the next day. <laughs> so I'm not sure on like hours or anything like that, but set it to the side, be patient with it, give yourself ample time. If it's something you need to get in the mail right away, you would obviously skip that step, but it gives it some raised dimension. I don't wanna, there we go. I don't wanna have it um, start running because it's very wet, but how neat. And then, whoop, let me see if I can center the crown. Hopefully you can get an idea for that little wink of Stella glitter that's happening there. I really also love the glow of the pond. I think it's really pretty. It's subtle. You know exactly what it is, but it's just there. It's, it's not like, it's not the star of the show. It's just adding to the whole piece. So really pretty. Again, stamping the sentiment right on the panel was really nice to kind of just complemented it well without taking away from the rest of the scene. So I love this. I hope you love this as well. Again, everything will be in the description box below if you want to recreate this, or if you loved some of the things that I used and you want to use them on a card project of your own. All right, give this a thumbs up if you found this fun to watch, and I'll see you in the next video.